The air in the attic hung heavy, thick with dust and the scent of forgotten things. Emily lifted a tattered photograph from the box, her heart clenching as she recognized the man's shy smile. But it was the woman standing next to him, a woman she had never seen before, who made her blood run cold. Before we follow this new story, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Your support helps us create more content like this. Dust motes danced in the faint light filtering through the attic window. Emily sneezed, brushing a stray cobweb from the neck of her sweater. The air hung heavy, thick with the scent of time and forgotten things. Around her loomed stacks of cardboard boxes, each one a repository of memories she and Mark had deemed too precious to discard, yet not important enough to keep in the main part of the house. They had planned to tackle the attic together, a shared project for a rainy Saturday afternoon. But Mark was late, held up at work again. It was becoming a familiar refrain, one that left a dull ache in Emily's chest. Lately, their lives seemed filled with near misses, their paths diverging like the frayed ends of a rope. She reached for another box, its cardboard soft and yielding under her touch. This one was labeled Mark's Things. The writing faded and slightly smudged, a ghost of his younger self. Inside, beneath a layer of tissue paper, lay a jumble of faded photographs, trophies tarnished with age, and a worn-out baseball mitt that held the ghost of past summers. Emily smiled, a wave of nostalgia washing over her. They had been young then, their futures an unwritten script full of hope and promise. They had built a good life together, a life she cherished, a life that often felt like the happy ending to a fairy tale. But fairy tales, Emily had learned, were often sanitized versions of a much messier reality. She picked up a photograph, its edges softened with time, the colors muted. It showed a younger Mark, his hair darker then, his smile almost shy. He stood next to a woman Emily didn't recognize. The woman was beautiful, with long flowing hair and eyes that seemed to sparkle even in the stillness of the photograph. They stood close, their shoulders almost touching, their smiles genuine, unguarded. It was the kind of photograph that hinted at a shared history, a bond deeper than friendship. Emily felt a chill prickle her skin. She had never seen this photo before, never seen this woman. In all their years together, Mark had never mentioned her. A knot of unease tightened in Emily's stomach. Turning the photograph over, she found a date scrawled on the back in faded ink. Summer, 95. The summer before she met Mark. Suddenly, the air in the attic felt suffocating. Emily dropped the photograph back into the box as if it were burning her fingers. Her heart pounded against her ribs, a frantic drumbeat against the silence of the house. She tried to rationalize. It could be an old friend, a colleague, a distant cousin even, people he had known before, before her. But the easy explanation felt hollow, unable to fill the void of doubt that had opened within her. Emily wanted to believe it was nothing. A simple oversight, a forgotten chapter in the story of Mark's life. But the smiles in the photograph, the easy familiarity of their pose, whispered a different story, one she couldn't ignore. She found herself staring at the box, at the jumbled contents that suddenly seemed less like nostalgic relics and more like pieces of a puzzle she hadn't known existed. A puzzle that now beckoned her, whispering promises of a truth she wasn't sure she was ready to face? The sound of a car pulling into the driveway jolted Emily from her thoughts. Quickly, she closed the box, shoving it back into the shadows beneath a pile of old blankets. She needed time to think, to process this unexpected discovery, to understand why the sight of a single photograph had the power to unsettle the foundations of her life. Mark's footsteps echoed up the stairs, his familiar tread a counterpoint to the chaotic rhythm of her own heartbeat. Hey, he called out, his voice muffled by the attic door. You up here? Emily took a deep breath, forcing a smile onto her face. Up here, she called back, her voice trembling slightly. She just needed time. Time to understand the secrets hidden within the empty space of the photograph. Time to decide if she truly wanted to know the man in the picture the man who might be a stranger. Dinner that night was a strained affair. Emily found herself watching Mark from across the table, his face illuminated by the soft glow of the candles she had lit, hoping to inject a note of normalcy into the evening. 
He seemed oblivious to her scrutiny, absorbed in recounting a story about a client, his brow furrowed with work-related stress. Or was it stress? Emily found herself questioning every gesture, every flicker of emotion that crossed his face. The doubts, once sown, were quick to take root, twisting their way through the fertile ground of her uncertainty. She found herself replaying the image of the photograph in her mind, each time noticing a new detail, a nuance that fueled her suspicions. Mark paused mid-sentence, catching her eye. Is everything all right? You seem distant tonight. His voice held a note of concern, and for a moment, Emily felt a pang of guilt. Was she being paranoid, projecting her own anxieties onto him? Just tired, she murmured, offering a wan smile. Long day. He nodded, accepting the explanation a little too easily. Or perhaps it was her own guilt that made it seem that way. The rest of the meal passed in a blur of forced conversation and strained silences. Emily found herself unable to shake off the weight of her discovery, the questions swirling in her mind like a flock of startled birds. Later, as Mark settled into his usual spot on the sofa, engrossed in a basketball game, Emily excused herself. She retreated to their bedroom, seeking refuge in the familiar surroundings, hoping to find solace in the space they had shared for so many years. But even here, the sense of unease lingered. She found herself drawn to the walk-in closet, to the back corner where they stored a small cedar chest. It was filled with mementos from their life together. Love letters written in the early days of their courtship, a dried corsage from their first anniversary, a collection of seashells gathered during a trip to the coast. Emily knelt down, running her fingers over the smooth surface of the chest. The wood was cool beneath her touch, a stark contrast to the heat that seemed to be building within her. Pushing aside a layer of tissue paper, she unearthed a small, leather-bound photo album. It was an album they had compiled shortly after their wedding, filled with professional portraits and candid shots from their honeymoon. Emily flipped through the pages, each image a testament to the love they had shared, the life they had built. But as she turned the pages, a chilling thought occurred to her. What if it was all a lie? What if the man she had married, the man she had built a life with, was not who she thought he was. She slammed the album shut, the sound echoing sharply in the quiet room. The room seemed to close in around her, the air thick with suspicion and doubt. Emily knew she couldn't ignore this. She had to know the truth. The question was, where to start? She thought back to the photograph, to the woman's face, so familiar yet unknown. There was a name written on the back, scrawled in the same faded ink as the date, a name she hadn't noticed before. Anna. Emily's heart skipped a beat. Anna. Who was Anna, and what was her connection to Mark? The name echoed in Emily's mind. Anna. 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 It was a simple name, elegant even, but in the context of her discovery, it felt weighted, heavy with unspoken meaning. Sleep that night was a fleeting visitor, chased away by Emily's restless thoughts. Every time she drifted close, the image of Mark and Anna, their smiles frozen in time, pulled her back into the cold grip of wakefulness. Morning brought little relief. The world outside seemed deceptively normal, the rising sun casting its familiar golden glow across the breakfast table. Mark sat opposite her, sipping his coffee, reading the news on his phone, the picture of contented domesticity. But Emily couldn't shake the feeling that a chasm had opened up between them invisible yet impossible to ignore. Every shared glance, every casual touch, felt freighted with suspicion, the unspoken questions hanging in the air like smoke. She tried to act normal, to engage in their usual morning routine, but the words caught in her throat, the normalcy of their exchange feeling like a betrayal of the turmoil raging within her. Mark, seemingly oblivious, finally looked up from his phone. You okay? he asked, his brow furrowed with concern. You seem a little off. Emily forced a smile, hating the way it felt brittle and false. Just tired, she murmured, the same excuse she had used the night before. He didn't press, returning his attention to his phone. Emily watched him, a strange mix of anger and longing welling up inside her. Who was this man sitting across from her? The man she had shared her life with, her bed, her hopes and dreams. Was he a stranger? 
She needed answers. She needed to know who Anna was. But how? The question gnawed at her throughout the day. She went through the motions of her routine, her work at the bookstore providing a welcome distraction. Though even there, the name whispered through her thoughts, a persistent undercurrent to the day's rhythm. It was during a lull in the afternoon, while helping a customer locate a first edition Hemingway, that an idea struck her. It was a long shot, a desperate hope more than a plan. But desperation, she was learning, had a way of pushing you beyond the familiar, past the boundaries of what you thought possible. Closing the bookstore that evening, Emily felt a strange sense of purpose settle over her, a stealing of her resolve. She wouldn't be a passive observer in her own life, she thought, not anymore. She would find out the truth, even if it broke her. Back at home, while Mark was upstairs showering, Emily retreated to her makeshift office, a small alcove tucked away off the kitchen. Her laptop held the promise of answers, or at least a starting point in her search for them. With trembling fingers, she opened the internet browser, her heart pounding in her chest, the rhythmic clatter of keys the only sound in the quiet house. She typed Anna into the search bar, knowing it was a futile effort, like trying to find a single grain of sand on a beach. She needed more. Then she remembered the date on the back of the photograph. Summer, 95. Mark had been living in Chicago then, before they met. Emily quickly added Chicago and 1,995 inches to her search, her heart quickening with each keystroke. The screen flickered, thousands of results flashing before her eyes. Doubt threatened to overwhelm her. What was she hoping to find? A needle in a digital haystack? She clicked through page after page, each dead end fueling her frustration. Just as she was about to abandon her search, a name on the screen snagged her attention. It was a link to an old article from the Chicago Tribune archives, dated July 1995. The headline, barely visible in the pixelated image, sent a chill down her spine. Local artists' work to be featured in prestigious gallery. And beneath it, a name, Anna Walker. Emily stared at the screen, her breath catching in her throat. Anna Walker. Could this be her? The woman in the photograph? She clicked on the link, the page loading slowly, the anticipation almost unbearable. As the article resolved itself on the screen, Emily felt a cold wave wash over her. The accompanying photograph showed a young woman with long flowing hair and eyes that seemed to sparkle even in the grainy black and white of the newspaper image. It was her. There was no mistaking it. Anna. But it wasn't just the photograph that made Emily's blood run cold. It was the caption beneath it that sent a shard of ice into her heart. Anna Walker, pictured with her fiancé, Mark. The surname was cut off, obscured by the article's layout. Emily stared at the screen, the words blurring before her eyes. Fiancé. Mark had been engaged. To Anna? The ground seemed to shift beneath her feet. The life she thought she knew. The man she had built it with all seemed to crumble away, leaving her teetering on the precipice of a truth she wasn't sure she was ready to face. The word hung in the air between Emily and the silent computer screen. Fiancé. It felt foreign, jarring, like a word from a language she didn't understand, yet one that carried a weight that threatened to crush her. She reread the article, clinging to each word as if it were a lifeline in a sea of doubt. It spoke of Anna's artistic talent, her promising future, her engagement to her high school sweetheart, her high school sweetheart. Not a word about Mark, no mention of their relationship, their life together in Chicago. It was as if that part of his past had been erased, wiped clean from the digital record. Or maybe, a chilling thought whispered, it had never existed at all. Emily scrolled through the article again, searching for any mention of Mark's last name, anything that could corroborate the connection, solidifying the reality of the photograph she had found. But there was nothing. The article was short, a mere blip in the archives of the Chicago Tribune, as if even the universe had deemed their story insignificant, unworthy of a more prominent place in the grand narrative of time. The weight of her discovery pressed down on Emily, suffocating her. She felt adrift, unmoored from the life she had always known. The certainty of her love for Mark replaced with a gnawing suspicion that felt like a betrayal of everything they had built together. 
She thought back to their life in Chicago, the city where they had met, fallen in love, and built their first home together. They had moved there shortly after their honeymoon, drawn to the vibrant energy of the city, the promise of a fresh start. Or had it been a fresh start for Mark? An escape from a past he never spoke of? Emily closed her eyes, images from those early years flashing before her mind's eye. Their first apartment, a cramped but cozy one-bedroom in Wicker Park, the countless hours spent exploring the city, hand in hand, discovering hidden cafes and vibrant street art. Their first Thanksgiving together, just the two of them, a small turkey and a shared sense of gratitude for the life they were building. Those memories, once a source of comfort, now felt tainted, shadowed by the specter of Anna, a constant reminder of the secrets Mark had kept hidden. Emily forced herself to confront the possibility that had been lurking in the back of her mind. What if Mark had never been honest with her about his past? What if their entire relationship was built on a foundation of lies? The thought was unbearable, yet she couldn't shake the feeling that it held a grain of truth, a seed of doubt that had taken root and was now threatening to poison everything she held dear. She needed to confront him. The words hung in the air, unspoken, yet heavy with their own kind of gravity. Confrontation was not in Emily's nature. She preferred quiet resolution, gentle understanding. But the stakes were too high now, the potential consequences too great. She took a deep breath, stealing her resolve. She deserved the truth. Their life together, the love they shared, deserved at least that. The sound of footsteps on the stairs jolted Emily back to the present. Mark. Her heart pounded against her ribs, a wild rhythm against the silence of the house. He was home. She could hear his familiar footsteps approaching the kitchen, the clinking of dishes as he prepared a late-night snack. A wave of dizziness washed over her, her carefully constructed composure threatening to crumble. She wanted to run, to escape the suffocating weight of the impending confrontation. But she stood her ground, her feet rooted to the floor, her gaze fixed on the doorway. The truth, however painful, awaited on the other side. And Emily, despite her fear, found herself strangely ready to face it. Mark wandered into the kitchen, his presence a tangible shift in the atmosphere. He was humming softly to himself, a melody Emily didn't recognize, a tune seemingly oblivious to the storm brewing within her. He paused, sensing her gaze. Hey, he said, a hint of surprise in his voice. Didn't hear you come in? His eyes, usually so open, so full of warmth, now seemed shrouded in a veil of something Emily couldn't decipher. Fatigue? Or was it something else? Something more deliberate? We need to talk, she said, her voice a low murmur, barely audible above the hum of the refrigerator. The casual tone of his greeting evaporated. The easygoing smile he had worn only moments before faded, replaced by a look of apprehension. Everything okay? he asked, his brow furrowing with concern. Emily hesitated. The words felt heavy on her tongue, like stones she was being forced to swallow. It's about, she began, then stopped, unsure of how to proceed. How do you confront the person you love with a suspicion that feels like an act of betrayal? It's about Anna, she finally blurted out, the name a shard of ice piercing the fragile membrane of their carefully constructed reality. Mark stiffened his body language a visible manifestation of her accusation. The color drained from his face, leaving him pale and drawn under the harsh glare of the kitchen lights. He looked away, his gaze settling on some undefined point beyond the window above the sink. The silence stretched between them, heavy with unspoken words, and the weight of years spent building a life on what might very well be a lie. Anna, he finally repeated, his voice barely a whisper the name sounding foreign and distant, as if he were trying to recall a long-forgotten dream. The woman in the photograph, Emily pressed, her voice trembling with a potent cocktail of anger and fear. The one you're... the one you were engaged to. He turned back to her, his eyes wide with what seemed like genuine surprise. What are you talking about, Em? His denial, so swift and seemingly sincere, gave Emily pause. Was it possible she was mistaken? Had she misread the clues, jumped to conclusions based on a single photograph and a hastily researched news article? But then she saw it. A flicker of something in his eyes. Not fear, exactly. More like... recognition. 
a fleeting glimpse of a past he had kept carefully hidden, a past that had come back to haunt them both. Don't lie to me, Mark, she said, her voice gaining strength, fueled by a growing certainty that she was right. I know about Anna, about Chicago, about everything. The words hung in the air, heavy with accusation and the bitter tang of betrayal. Mark's shoulders slumped, his carefully constructed facade crumbling under the weight of her knowledge. He ran a hand through his hair, the gesture conveying a weariness that seemed to go beyond the exhaustion of a long day. Where did you hear about this? He asked, his voice a low murmur, devoid of its usual warmth. It doesn't matter, Emily replied, her voice shaking with a mix of anger and unshed tears. What matters is why you lied to me. Lied? He repeated, the word catching in his throat like a sob. I never lied, Emily. Not to you. Then explain it, she demanded, her voice rising in anger. Explain why I found a photo of you with another woman, a woman you were engaged to. Explain why you never once mentioned her, not in all the years we've been together. Mark looked at her, his eyes filled with a mixture of emotions she couldn't decipher. Regret? Shame? Or was it fear? He opened his mouth as if to speak, then closed it again, the words failing him. Emily watched him, her heart pounding in her chest, a frantic drumbeat against the silence that seemed to be suffocating them both. The air crackled with unspoken truths, the weight of their shared history pressing down on them with suffocating force. In that moment, Emily knew that their lives, the life they had built together, would never be the same. The only question was, could their love survive the truth? The silence stretched between them, a chasm filled with unspoken words and the weight of shattered expectations. Emily held her breath, each tick of the kitchen clock a hammer blow to the fragile remnants of her composure. Mark finally spoke, his voice barely a whisper raw with a vulnerability she had never heard before. It was a lifetime ago, Em, he said, the words seeming to pain him. Before I met you. Before I knew what love really was. He turned away, his gaze drifting towards the window, the city lights beyond the glass, a blurred kaleidoscope of colors against the dark canvas of the night. He seemed lost in the past, a ghost haunting the edges of his own memories. Anna, she was my past my high school sweetheart. We were young, though we had it all figured out. He paused, his shoulders slumping as if weighed down by the burden of his confession. We were engaged, yes. It felt right at the time. The natural progression of things. Our families were thrilled. We were living some idealized version of our parents' lives. Mark turned back to Emily, his eyes pleading for understanding. But somewhere along the way, we drifted apart. We wanted different things, had different dreams. She was driven, ambitious, wanted to share her art with the world. And I, I was lost, adrift, clinging to a future that no longer felt like my own. He ran a hand through his hair, the gesture weary, defeated. The engagement, it ended badly. There was anger, resentment. We were both young, foolish, hurt each other in ways we didn't know how to fix. Emily listened her own anger tempered by a growing sense of sadness. It wasn't just Mark's past that was unraveling before her. It was the illusion of the life they had built together, the foundation of shared truths she had never questioned, never dared to question. Why didn't you tell me? She asked, the question a whisper escaping her lips before she could stop it. He looked at her then, his eyes filled with a pain that mirrored her own. I was ashamed, Em, he admitted, his voice barely audible. Ashamed of my mistakes, of the way it ended. And when I met you, you were so different, so full of life, so ready to embrace the future. I didn't want to taint that, to burden you with the ghosts of my past. He stepped closer, reaching for her hand, but Emily instinctively pulled away. His touch, usually a source of comfort, felt foreign, almost intrusive. So you just erased her? She asked her voice a mixture of hurt and disbelief. Pretended that part of your life never happened? No, he said, his voice firm, insistent. Never. I just compartmentalized it, locked it away in a place where it couldn't hurt anyone, least of all you. He paused, searching her face for a reaction, 
a sign that she understood. But it did hurt me, Mark, Emily said, her voice trembling with the effort of holding back the tears. It hurt me because you kept it from me, because it made me question everything we had together. The truth, she realized, was a double-edged sword. It had the power to cut through deceit, to expose the raw vulnerability beneath the carefully constructed facade. But it also had the power to wound, to leave scars that might never fully heal. I know, he said, his voice heavy with remorse. And I am so sorry, Em. I never meant to hurt you. You have to believe that. Emily looked at him, her heart a battlefield of conflicting emotions. Anger warred with sadness, love with a betrayal that cut deeper than she could have imagined. She wanted to hate him, to unleash the fury that simmered just beneath the surface. But as she looked at him, at the pain etched on his face, the remorse that seemed to emanate from his very being, she knew that hate would be a futile gesture, a hollow victory that would leave them both empty and alone. What do we do now? She asked, the question a fragile bridge over the chasm that had opened up between them. Mark reached for her again, this time hesitantly, as if afraid she might shatter at his touch. He cupped her face in his hands, his thumbs gently wiping away the tears she hadn't realized were streaming down her cheeks. We pick up the pieces, he said, his voice husky with emotion. We talk, we heal, we rebuild, together. He looked deep into her eyes, his gaze a reflection of their shared history, the love they had built, the pain they now had to overcome. Can we do that, Em? He asked, his voice raw with vulnerability. Can we find our way back to each other, even after this? Emily looked at him, at the man she had loved for so long, the man who was now a stranger, a familiar ghost haunting the corridors of her heart. She didn't have an answer, not yet. But as she gazed into his eyes, she saw a glimmer of hope, a shared flicker of the love that had once burned so brightly between them, and in that fragile ember, Emily dared to believe that maybe, just maybe, they could find their way back to each other. The path ahead would be long and arduous, paved with the jagged shards of broken trust and the weight of unspoken truths. But they would walk it together, hand in hand, one shaky step at a time. Because even in the face of betrayal, love, like a stubborn ember, had a way of refusing to be extinguished. It flickered, threatened to fade, yet clung tenaciously to the promise of a new dawn, a second chance to find their way back to the light. Sometimes, facing the truth, however painful, is the only way to find a path towards healing and forgiveness. What are your thoughts on Emily and Mark's story? Share them in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories that explore the complexities of love, loss, and the enduring power of the human heart.